کون کم بخت برداشت کرنے کو پیتا ہے ہم تو پیتے ہیں کہ یہاں بیٹھ سکے تمہیں دیکھ سکے تمہیں برداشت زیادہ زیادہ کر لو اوکے اوکے Hey folks, CA Rachna Ranade here and I welcome you all to a very very interesting IPO analysis of Sula Wine Yards. Before we understand more about the company, let's try and understand about the wine history and wine making process. Wine was introduced to India initially in Goa by the French and the Portuguese in the 16th century. Up to 2000, wine was restricted to production in small pockets, in small scale and majorly it was imported and sold in 5 star hotels. Wine making as a thing came into limelight post 2000. Now let's understand how is wine produced in India. The fruits from which wine is to be prepared are first harvested. Then they are sent for processing and fermentation after which blending takes place. Then it is stored in stainless steel tanks or in barrels for aging after which stabilization and filtration is done. Finally, it is sent for bottling, labeling takes place and then it's ready for dispatch. Now let's up understand about the company in a little bit more detail. Sula Vineyards Limited is India's largest wine producer and seller as of 31st March 2022. Companies mainly into two businesses. Which two? The very first one is wine business. Now what do they do in this? It includes production of wine. It includes import of wines and spirits and also distribution of wines and spirits, right? The second one is wine tourism business. If you have been to the production facility at Nashik, there are few more as well. There many people would go there for the very first time. Maybe they would have a tour of the entire facility. Their wine tasting is also given. Many people taste wine for the very first time. If they like it, then they can be like Kaun kam bakht or whatever. If they like the taste, they might be the potential customers for the company and that is how in turn the revenue may be boosted right so I hope you have understood that these two are the major categories of businesses how many types of wines does the company make as on date the company produces 56 different labels of wines now when I read this for the very first time I was like what do we mean by 56 labels of wine it means that they manufacture or produce 56 different types of wines. Labels of wine is like types of wine. Now, what is written on the label? It could be, uh, I mean, it could include details like whether it was imported or not, in which year it was manufactured, how much alcohol percentage is there in that wine. All these fine details are given in the label of that specific product. I hope with this you have understood about all the basic details about the company. Now let's move on with the industry analysis. The Indian alcohol beverage market is estimated around 2.6 lakh crore in 2022. Now what is 2.6 lakh crore? That is 2.6 trillion rupees. Now if you are confused with what is that alco beverages market for that have a look at this chart alco beverages includes what it includes beer it includes country liquor imfl which is indian manufactured foreign liquor it includes imported spirits and wine so this is kind of a market share of each of this category in the entire alco beverage market where is wine wine has a market share of just barely 1% in the entire market. Also, one more stat is that if I'm talking about entire alcohol beverage market, India is the third largest in the world after China and USA by volume terms in CY 2020. Now, again, if I go to specifically wine, as I mentioned, in, in India, wine consumption or the market share, I can say, is barely 1%, but the global average stands at 13.5%, whereas in select European countries, it is close to even 50%. So I hope you are understanding how underpenetrated is the wine segment in the overall alcohol beverages category in India. Now let's move on and understand few more details about wine category specifically. Right now we are talking about the alcohol beverages category. Now let's talk about specifically wine category. Wine category in India is estimated at 2.6 million cases. You might be like what is million cases? Now cases means one standard case will contain 12 bottles of wine. Okay. What did I say right now? Indian entire wine category is estimated at 2.6 million cases and one case is 12 bottles of wine so now you can imagine how many bottles of wine uh, control 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 <sighs> that's a lot 
isn't it? But now, again, if this is about 2022, 2.6 million cases, it is estimated to grow to 3.9 million cases by 2025 and which will include a CAGR of more than 14% in volume. Now, again, this was about what? This was about volume. Now, let's try and analyze about the value. Right, the Indian wine market is projected to reach 3785 crores by financial year 2025 with a CAGR of almost 20 percent. So that looks pretty promising. But now, in this chart, you'll be able to see that there are two types I'm referring to if I'm talking about Indian wine industry. What is red? Red is domestic and blue is imports. Now, if you see from 2022 to 2025. The imports are expected to grow from 775 crores to 1175 crores. So that's like a 50% rise. But in the domestic category, if you see, it is expected to grow from 1385 crores to 2610 crores. That's almost double the amount, right? So domestic has a better chance to grow as per, of course, everything is given in the RHP, right? Now, again, understand one more finer bifurcation of wine. Right now, we did as imports and domestic. One more different category can be fortified wine and 100% grape wine. Okay. Now, so this is like how wine is made. If it is made from 100% grapes, it will be like grapes, 100% grape wine, otherwise fortified wine. You can see that major chunk is of what? 100% grape wine. And that again is expected to grow from 1,345 to 2,550 from 2022 to 2025. Again, almost 100% growth. Now, why am I talking much so much about 100% gra uh, grapes wine? If you have a look at this chart, which talks about the market share in 100% grape wine industry, you can see that Sula Vineyards has the highest share with 52%. And balance are of what? Fratelli Wines, Grofer, Zampa and others, which are of course their competitors. Now, with all of these points, so many points, I hope you have understood about the entire industry in very much detail. Now, let's understand about the financials of the company. First, let's check the revenue growth. If you see the revenue has been a little bit topsy-turvy from 5,216 millions to 4,180 millions to 4,539 millions. It's not in a straight line. But if you talk about PAT, you can see from minus 159 million, it has grown to plus 41 million and directly to 521 million. Now, is it only PAT which is showing an increasing trend or is there an improvement in EBITDA margin as well, which is very important. So for that, if you have a look at this chart, EBITDA margin has also increased from 9.4% to 25% and even EBITDA in absolute numbers is also showing a very nice growing trend. Going back to the revenue thing, if you have a look at this pie chart, you can see how is the revenue classification of this entire company. Major business comes from the wine business of its own brand. Also, they get good business from uh, the imports category. Wine tourism business is also not bad. And a very small chunk comes from the others category. Now, going ahead with the valuations, we are going to do valuations comparison using two parameters. One is PE and one is P to BV. At the upper price band, but you might be like, what is the price band? Price band is from 340 rupees per share to 357 rupees per share. So at the upper price band of 357, the P multiple comes to 55, whereas the industry average comes to 83.11. If I'm talking about P to BV, again at the upper price band, it comes to six times, whereas industry P to BV comes to 10.05. Now two things here. For comparison, the, uh, comparison of with the peers, as per the RHP, these are the peers of the company of which the industry average will be taken. And if I were to talk about this company's PE and P to BV as compared to the industry average, you can very well see that there is some clear cut gap left by the company for potential listing gains because the PE as well as P to BV are lower as compared to the industry average. Now, if we check out some more points of the offer, offer is opening, the IPO is opening on 12th of December, that is today and I mean has opened today and will remain open till 14th of December 2022. Very important point, even if the issue size is of 960.35 crores, it is a 100% OFS. What is OFS? Promoters and other investors may sell their shares no fresh issue so not even one rupee is going to go to the company with all these things and with all the points that i discussed about the company i'm sure you might be like aren't there any negative points about the company aren't there any risks so of course there are certain risks 
Number one, wine industry is subject to changing license and excise regimes and this could have an adverse impact on the company's operations. One more risk of the company is that if there are adverse climatic conditions, this can impact the quality of grapes and these are the key raw material for their wine making process or it's the key raw material for the product. So these are some key risks for the IPO. Now two important questions. Number one, there are two more companies which are out with their IPO. Number one is Abans Holding Limited and number two is Landmark Cars Limited. What about these IPOs? For Abans Holding Limited, we have already released a blog on our website today, which is rachanaranari.com. And for the blog of Landmark Cars Limited, we are going to release that tomorrow on the blog again on our website rachanaranari.com. That was the first question. And the second, which is the most important question. With all the information of Sula Vineyards, question is, am I going to apply? And the answer is, yes, I'm going to apply for this IPO through all my DMAT accounts. So I want you all also to tell me in the comment section, what are your thoughts about the company? And if you're going to apply for this company's IPO or not, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you have, don't forget to share it with your friends. Till then, take care. Chai Hind and bye-bye.